My fellow guitar players who are into pedals, digital pedals that don't actually make a single sound. This is a very complicated video because we're looking at three products of the same product line and they don't make a sound but they enable you to get to sounds that otherwise you wouldn't have on your pedal board. We're talking about pedal board guitar interfaces which is something that recently emerged with the uh, groundbreaking things that IK Multimedia has done, uh, primarily to get their Amplitube software or iPad or uh, cell phone um, software in the hands of people to actually not use them with headphones and just, you know, on the go, but to actually be able to be live and, and use it. Some other companies have said, well, we want to do something similar, but possibly more ins and outs and higher quality. Uh, I like the IK stuff. Uh, uh, Orange uh, has the Omec Teleport, but for me, a lot of these things are kind of gadgety, but they're not fully featured. Now there's a Chinese company that approached me, and they're called Xtone, and they said, well, we got this thing. And I was like, oh, one of those interfaces, I'm going to have to bitch about a lot of stuff. So I looked at it, and Ola did a great video on it, and I think RJ Ronquillo, check out Ola and RJ, because they might, might cover stuff that I'm not, and I liked what I saw. It's still not everything I want, but it is quite a bit. So I'm going to run you through two of them dry and then the biggest one, which has the features of the other two, with uh, everything. So we're going to start with the X-Tone Smart Stomp. Let's go through features. Follow me. Try to keep up. Three stomps, what they do is send MIDI signals. So you can switch presets. You could even trigger MIDI notes, whatever your heart desires. This doesn't make a sound. The software in your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device, your computer, your Mac, your PC, that's what this triggers, okay? It connects with USB, and therefore it's an audio interface. It is USB powered, which means you can run it, you can play with it easily on the train, on the plane, and other things that rhyme with plane and train. But you can also 9 volt power it, so not to drain your iPad on the plane or train. <laughs> that was unplanned! God, I'm good! Um, beautiful golden is, let's just look at the back there, is the um, headphone out. So you can, you know, the headphone there if you want. Then there's XLR out, which, are, which is of course very professional and good, and the 9 volt and the USB. The USB cable, let's look at what's included. The USB cable is included. It's about a meter long, it's a good length. USB B to USB A. Now USB A is not going to fit into your iPhone, which is why this iPhone camera adapter, Lightning, is also included and you can even power it at the same time with USB-C as far as I see that. I think that's how that, or is that Lightning? It's probably, I don't know. It's probably how that works. I don't know if any other USB adapters are included. Because I have an iPad Pro which uses USB-C, they sent me, only me, this USB-A to C adapter, but it didn't work. So, if you have something with USB-C, order yourself a USB-B to USB-C cable, which is what I did, cost six bucks, and then it was working flawlessly. So, they give you a whole bunch of stuff in the box, but of course they can't take care of all the ins and outs. Um, the big knob on it is volume, or le volume. Then on the right side, right here, we have the guitar input which is weird that they, they, they say, uh, oh no, they just say in, yes. Um, and an expression pedal, which gets converted into MIDI 
and then you can control your software with an expression pedal. Very, very cool. On the other side, we have a stereo out, which you can use instead of the mono XLR and a very solid ground lift switch in case there's buzzing or something. So they thought of quite a bit. Now you can hook up your iPod, a, a, a iPad, iPhone, a Android device, um, Mac or PC, and run, let's say, bias effects, uh, guitar, native instruments, that guitar software that they make, that I've used a lot. I can't think of it right now. And Amplitube, and any kind of guitar software, or actually any kind of software, you could run Cubase uh, on your Mac and record on it. You can run Cubase on your laptop, PC. You can run Cubase on your iPad and record on it. It's just to get into the computer. And here, with the switches, you can remote control things. There's also uh, switch combinations you can hit. There are not just three signals you can send. If you hold in A longer, you're in the green mode. If you hold in B longer, you're in the blue mode. And C, you're in the red mode, which means you have nine different presets that you can send. There's three different layers of MIDI commands. So it works. It sounds clean, clean enough for recording on the on the go. Would I record a studio album with it? Hell no, but it's a great tool because it's USB powered to actually just jam with while you're recording some ideas on the train. Now, if you're an acoustic guitar player, you're saying this doesn't really help me because I can only record my piezo out and that's it. What if I want to record a mic? Or if you're a singer and you might want to track an actual song with everything. Well, then don't get this one. Get the Exton Duo. Now, the Exton Duo is everything I've just told you. It's very white and reflective. <laughs> Look at that. It's everything I told you with the exception of, do you see the gain knob there? That's a mic input. It is stupidly labeled in left and in right. That is absolutely incorrect. It is not in left and in right. It is in one which is guitar signal, and in two, which is a mic signal. Now, this can be phantom powered uh, by holding in the C button five seconds, and then the phantom power comes on. Um, and then you have a gain to adjust the mic level. Same thing here, stereo out, XLR out, mono, um, with uh, a ground lift. Everything the same, but instead of the expression input, you can use a mic. Why this isn't XLR, because we can clearly see that it can't fit XLR, I don't know. I wish this had been an XLR input. It just makes more sense. Now you need um, an XLR female to balanced quarter inch, but it can be phantom powered. So you can use condenser mics. That's a great solution for the songwriter, for the... Uh, acoustic guitar player for someone that needs a mobile device to record ha 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 to record themselves no what if you're an acoustic guitar what if you're a singer and you have great apps on your on your phone um looping apps or an amazing reverb that you love or some kind of effect thing that goes <laughs> by switching swiping your your finger this can be your access with the mic to that and then XLR or stereo out to the mixer and to get that sound in a live situation. So you have this on the, on the, on the floor, you have a cable up to your phone and you can actually get those phone sounds, get your vocal into the phone and then get that to front of house. Great solution, doesn't break the bank and rather small and you can even have presets to switch. Now, if you want to combine all those features, that's when a big one comes in. The Xtone Pro. Here we have the guitar in. Again, they're, they're doing in left and in right, which is a little bit misleading. Guitar in, mic in. This time, as you can see, with an XLR, they should have done that on the uh, Xtone Duo. We have the expression from the normal Xtone. We have a gain now on top. Um, we have a, this time 48 volt uh, light, which is very easy to turn on by just holding in F. Bam, it's on. 
Very simple. It's something you have to remember, but that's it. Um, we have the 9 volt, we have the USB. This time we have MIDI in and out, so you can hook up MIDI keyboards or even whatever triggering anything in your iPad, iPhone, Android, PC or Mac, and even out in order to go to whatever MIDI needs sent to. Headphone out, ground lift switch. XLR out like the other ones, stereo out like the other ones. That's what's connected right now. We have six MIDI switches. There you go. Very simple. Now, if I want to go to MIDI mode 2, I hold in B, and bam, I'm in blue mode. Would be nice if those actually also showed me blue. If I hold this in, I'm in red mode, so there's three times six MIDI messages. They're continuous controllers, not program changes, um, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it works with the software. Um, there also are three different modes, which I can switch depending on what software you use on your iPhone, iPad, blah, 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 blah. But holding in different combinations, but we're not going to go into that. We're going to go into the green mode, which makes the most sense. Um, volume, which is the output. And there's a mon switch because the Pro has hardware monitoring, which means if I hold in this, everything on the inputs will automatically go straight to the outputs. That's it. We don't really need that because we want to hear what the software does. It's a little bit bigger pedal, not huge, not gigantic. And uh, this on your pedal board will definitely allow you to, you know, get those modular sounds from your, from your digital devices into your system, into front of house, um, or at home. If you're a guitar player and you primarily want to, you know, jam practice and want like an iPad or a mobile solution, this can also function as your audio interface. Would I use it as my main interface at home? I probably wouldn't because it's meant as a pedal board interface. Good. All that being said, let's go into a couple of things that I wish were, were there. Something I also didn't like on some of the other devices on the market. Now, if it's a pedal, interface, a pedal board interface, I might want to play with my iPad or have like a synth sound coming from the iPad once in a while. But once I'm connected to this, I'm connected to it. Okay. Uh, I think the Omega Teleport you could turn on and off so your guitar was running through or not. But the problem is the destinations are different. The destination for this is front of house. It's a mixer because they are finished sounds. Now, the destination for the unprocessed sound, just the guitar, that's your amp. Now, I wish there was simply an AB switch where one of these switches I could program to take the dry signal out of another output, out of output dry, so that I can switch between sending it to my iPhone and having really, really cool effect sounds or whatever and sending them to the front of house, or turning that off and going straight to my amp and rocking the fuck out. Or doing both at the same time. So there should be an A, B, and then A plus B. And then I have another knob for mix. So I can actually mix how loud I want the iPhone, how, not, or, or how much is going to my amp. But you get the idea. Some way to incorporate this. Now, if I want to do this, I literally need an A, B switch on my board. Or I need a looper switcher where either I'm going to my amp or I'm going to this. So I need extra devices in order to say where I'm going. Okay, uh, if I have the little one, that is of course great. But once my guitar goes in here, it's all going into the digital world and then being processed, coming back and going to front of house or wherever. Um, of course, I can also go into my amp, but there's no way to turn this off. If I have this between my guitar and my amp, and I sometimes want to send a cool effect into my amp, there's no way to turn the digital world off. So I would like a way of mixing it or going A, B. Right now, as it stands, you will need an extra switch on the pedal board to either go into the digital world or stay in your analog world, or maybe do both, do an A, B. So you need an A, B, Y. I think that's the whole idea. Just to let you know, if you really want to incorporate that into your pedal board. I have bias effects. It could also be amplitude. It could also be uh, who knows what, any kind of amp simulation. There's tons of them. There's something from PV. Um, I have the Eventide reverb, the Eventide pitch, 
and also somewhere is the Eventide Ultra Tab, which are really, really cool. For 20 bucks, you get Eventide algorithms. There's MIDI Guitar, which takes your guitar signal and turns it into MIDI. And there's also Quanti Loop. There's a many, many things that you can do. You can use Cubase with this. You can use, uh, uh, what is that, uh, GarageBand. Obviously, many, many options. We're going to do Bias FX. So when you open this, um, it's actually fairly simple. You could even assign, I think by holding this, there you go. Click to learn MIDI. F. Bam. I just sent the F thing to it. And what I can do now, apparently, I can just turn that on and off. So you can even very quickly, as you can see, assign individual knobs to individual pedals. So if you wanted to, you could have uh, the green bank be presets, but your blue bank would be in individual pedals on and off on a certain preset. Easy. Very cool. And you switch between them by holding in B. Bam. Now it would be pedals. Holding in this would be presets. Um, so if we go to presets right here, basic bass, you hold that in. Oh, uh, yeah. You hold that in. Here we go. MIDI learn. It's already assigned, but I'll do it. And you click on it. You click the switch. That's it. We're going to go to B for lead. We're going to do the same thing. Why doesn't it work? Here we go. I have to click on the right, apparently. And B is that. And C. I'll hold that in. Oh, and that. Easy clean. Is MIDI learn D. Ah, okay, so there's another one there. MIDI learn. Bam. Let's do that. Plexi dirt. MIDI learn. And they're all assigned. So if I now go, and you can see. Ah, wait. Doesn't work. One, two. So the two didn't work. I don't know why. One, two, three. What the? Ah. Oh. What? I'm confused. Okay. That works. But not on bank B. Ah, so if I'm changing banks, I get it. If I'm changing banks, it's going one, two, three, four. But can I assign this? Bank up. Bank down. Let's see. Why not? Yeah, look at that. Bank up, bank down. A one, two, three, four. Bank up. One, two. Bank up. Well, they're, they're empty. I mean, that's easy, okay? Um, assigning something to a certain pedal, super easy. So far, piece of cake. Um, in the settings, uh, this is how the uh, manual proposes to do that. The manual is not super well written. It's Chinglish. I mean, it's, it's a China manual. You get what they're trying to say. It's not brilliant. Now, the good thing is, you click these things on, you enable MIDI, it's all you have to do. You get the software, which I think is 10.99 in the basic version that I have now. And it just works. I'm going to crank that up a bit on the input side. Now, one thing that I noticed is that there's a big, big, big hollow sound. I don't know if this is the software or the device, the x Pro. I have zero idea, but there's a phase issue. 
if you if I now take the left and right side and I pan them in the middle, it completely disappears, which means the left and right side are identical right now. It's not great, okay? If I take a stereo effect, let me see if I, how do I change that? Ah, choose. We click choose. Um, I only have a digital delay. Stereo chorus. Let's see what happens. It should technically... Oh, that sounds phenomenally good. The latency is almost non-existent. Uh, so that's really great. Uh, but if you don't have a stereo anything, if I throw that away, both sides are the same. And that means in a mix, if I pan them in the middle, they're completely gone. That's a bias effects problem, then not a X-tone problem. Um, so use it in mono, which is what I will do right now. I'm only recording one side now. <laughs> That's really a great sound. And I can just switch with my the bass sound. Now I can obviously go ahead and take this um, and just use it as an effect by pretty much opening the Eventide plugins and plugging the X-Tone Pro or the X-Tone or the X-Tone Duo into the effects loop of my amp. I could, I'm not gonna, but you can. And that turns your X-Tone into an algorithm from the H9 Eventide. And if you wanted that, that's pretty good. You could even turn the amp off here somehow and only use the effects from the software in the effects loop of your amp. The possibilities are literally endless. Um, but the cool thing is if you wanted, I'm gonna turn the drive off here, see? <laughs> can get that plexi a bit cleaner. Both of them were panned in the middle. Why would you do that? Now we can record stereo again. Plexis, panned in the middle. So the cool thing is I can go and actually access different apps. I mean, that's an Apple thing. I have no idea what Android. Android usually isn't that good with audio. Uh, but so I can go and... So I can actually go and now play into the black hole reverb by Eventide from my bias FX software. So let's listen to some of that.
That's phasing in a different way. And you usually need your H9 to do that. Well, you can do that now with the X-Tone and some software. So you could put that, if you wanted, wanted to, um, stand alone, you don't need bias effects, into the effects loop of your amp. Or you could kick that out. Um, I can go to this thing. Why are there two of them? That is the big question that I have to ask myself. I can now add this pitch thing. That's the uh, super mega micro pitch chorusy kind of a thing. Um, we can close that, close that, and uh, go away. I can kick that, but I can also add the ultra pitch delay. It's all coming out of my iPad. The X-Tone Pro doesn't do shit. It doesn't do anything other than enable me to get it out of my iPad. Now, um, let's test one more thing in bias. Where did bias go? Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, yes. <laughs> so, let's go and also make that stereo. <laughs> Um, let's see if I can add there we go we have a crybaby kind of a wah they call it cry wah now I haven't tried this yet but we'll try to assign this uh, mission engineering error EP25 to it by plugging it into the expression input it's coming out here I'm plugging it in Let's see how I do that. Okay, well, there's, there's something being sent. But it's not really, really using the full range here. Um, of the pedal, so I don't know what the deal with that is.
It's kind of working, but it's also not. Uh, now they recommended a different kind of pedal. It might be that they tested it with theirs. Uh, the range that the uh, 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 Aero is sending in is probably not something that it's, you know, calibrated to. On the other hand, might be something you can set up, I don't know. It's not the most functional thing right now. For me also, it's a neat thing, but it's not an amazing thing. I gotta go get Bobby now. Hello, I'm back. Uh, we have a weekend guest. Bobby! One of my favorite dogs in the world, but he's sadly not mine. Right, Bobby? Say hello to the nice people. Hello, nice people! Okay, you can now look, look, go look for your mommy. Who's gone? Bye, Bobby. He's cool. So, uh, let's look at a couple of other apps um, for which I have to close this one. So, if you want to uh, go direct, I think you could do that as well. Let's just try that, because I, well, I haven't. Um, there you go. So if I had that in the effects loop of my amp... I know what you want. You want to sh see it, so... Let's do it. That seems not gonna love me, but let's do it. So I have it now wired into the effects loop of the Dynamis, which is a great cleaner. I'm playing with this guitar directly into the Dynamis. And that's pretty amazing, because what I'm hearing is the dynamics in dynamics into the ox dry. So if I activate that, all of a sudden I have an even tight effect with the X Tone Smart Stomp and my iPad in the Dynamics. Tiniest bit of latency is added, okay. Questions, can I assign MIDI to this somehow? Because then I could turn that on and off. I don't know if I can. No idea if that's possible. Maybe in... Mm -hmm. No idea how to do that. No idea. <laughs> This is fully possible. Now, moving back to using it directly into the computer. Let's look at another form of app, which is the Quanti Loop, uh, which is a looper. This is the demo version, so it's going to bug us a little bit. Of course, now I'm, you see, um, I, I'm completely dry, so you'd have to have some kind of preamp pedal in front of that. <laughs> More volume. Remember, we are now using the other box. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
disabled this message. I literally have no idea how it works, but it's a four track looper in your little iPad. Um, really cool is MIDI to guitar, which again is also like a demo version, so we can only really test the piano. But if you wanted to record, A multi, um, uh, no, a, a polyphonic MIDI to guitar. You don't need a pickup or something for basic parts. Of course, if you have the Roland with the GK pickup, it is more precise, but this works. Or don't play that. Now, of course, with um, the X-Tone Smart Stomp, you will have to take those and record them as audio because it doesn't have a MIDI out. Um, however, if you have the Pro, you can simply go record and there's probably a MIDI out coming from the app. And you can send that into your audio interface from your computer so you could use the Pro just as an audio to MIDI converter with your iPad or iPhone or whatever. Take the MIDI out, record that information into your DAW, and then work with it there. So, you can see there are a lot of things you can do. Use it as an extra effect on your pedal board. Use it as a modeler on your pedal board. Use it as an effect in the effects loop of your amp. Use it as an audio interface to get to your DAW in an iPad, iPhone, Android, PC. Use it as a MIDI to audio thing, uh, audio to MIDI thing. Uh, use it as a playback device live. You have, um, instead of having a laptop for your backing tracks, uh, for your uh, play alongs, all that stuff, you know, the band stuff, when you have the uh, vocals extra recorded, you could actually have that on your pedal board, have a phone, play that, bam, go into the front of house with XLR. No need for a laptop, for example. There's, the, the uses are endless. Now, is this the perfect device? I've seen several that attempted to be pedal board audio interfaces, and I think none of them convinced me as much as the X-Tone, which is why I'm making the video. I refused to make others because I was like, I don't get it yet. I don't think it's there. Now, I think the X-Tone is not there yet in terms of perfection, but it is the closest that I've seen so far. Um, because the smaller ones do the job, especially with the switching the MIDI and it being a solid build. Is it pretty? No. Um, but it's a solid build with soft clickies and, and good lights. This is all good. Um, this is an extra solid build. The headphone jack, everything is just saying, you know, big ass screws here. It's not, it's not put together prettily. It's not a sexy product design. It's a very practical product design. Big ass feet. It's not something that you look at and like, whoa, those guys know how to make a product that I'm drooling over. No, this is a tool and it's a good tool. Um, these feel, they feel China a little bit. But the price also is very, very attractive, which is why, you know, it comes from that country. But, they're the first ones that attempted to do this, and they did it well. The thing that I'm missing is switchability between the digital world and world, 
between the digital world and going directly to your amp. So pretty much having an AB between this and your amp pretty much giving me a through, a true bypass through, and then having like an ABY where I can have both. That would be great. The thing is, once you go in here, it's digital only. That's it. As you could see, for example, um, with uh, going into the effects loop, which, which we just did, I could deactivate in the app, which I can probably assign to a MIDI foot switch, but then it's still going through the app. I would like it to be able to completely disable itself completely and then just go through. Other than that, you have the one with the expression pedal, which I couldn't really make work with the range, but that might be because of the expression pedal I use. If you use the one they recommend, which is relatively cheap, it could work better. Um, you can use the one for the mic, where I would really like to see an XLI and put a sit wrong on the chair um, instead of this. Or you could just go for the big one, which has everything, but that is considerably bigger. I think there's a lot to like here. I think Toman has these. I think that's where they came from. The Chinese had them sent to me through Toman or something like that. Um, as far as, and that's always the thing, there is no actual software that comes with them. They're not controlled through some software. There is a PC driver, um, but that's like an as you all kind of generic driver. As far as a nice mixing console that goes with it, or actually their own app where you can then hook it up and then program it. All the programming is done by holding down switches. Being from where they are, I know that having an app and having a good or, or, or a, a good driver or a, a console software or having a manual that's amazing or having brilliant service that you can call up and ask questions, I know that's an issue. Let's not kid ourselves. That's pretty, they can build stuff, no question about it. Software-wise, eh, um, support, eh, always a problem. Not because they don't want to, but the language barrier always is a problem. So I think you can still trust these things because they're easy to figure out. If you're looking for a brand that has a solid backend with you know, software developed team and, and, and support and people you can call in every country day or night, that probably not. So you have to weigh that when you buy this. However, the price is very attractive. So you might not care about this. I think it's a good product. I think it does the job. There was a little bit of a learning curve. There was a little bit of, of the cables back and forth, but I figured it out. And once it, it works, it works well. x series, Smart Stomp. X-Tone, X-Tone Duo, X-Tone Pro. Check them out if you can. Order, see if you like. If not, I think a Toman return it within 30 days, all fine. Links below. I have to find Bobby now and play with him. Um, thank you for watching. Thanks, Leslie, for switching. And I'll see you later. You know, see you on the flippity flop. Animals at the end. And see